great for five social media and events. Hey everybody, it's Mr. A45 here, and we're interviewing another business owner. Uh, we're talking to Fernando today. Fernando, tell us who you are and what do you do? What's up, everyone? I'm Fernando, the Mortgage Maverick. I'm Vice President of Home Lending at Cross Country Mortgage, and we're a national mortgage bank. All right, awesome. So first and foremost, like any other video that I do, I always want to make sure I get it right in the front. If people wanted to work with you or if they wanted to contact you, what would be the best method and how would they do that? All of my social media is linked at at Real Mortgage Maverick. Mortgage is M-O-R-T-G-A-G-E Maverick, uh, M-A-V-E-R-I-C-K. Or they could email me at Fernando period de Cunha, D-A-C-U-N-H-A at CCM.com. Um, or you could go on to realmortgagemaverick.com. All right. Makes it nice and simple when you got everything all lined up like that. Yeah, right. my e my Gmail is like that too, but I, I gave the work the work email. <laughs> there you go. I mean, we're at work, right? Um, so you know, when it comes to mortgages, when it comes to like stuff like that, right? I, I don't know anything. I just know that I could get one and then I could buy a house. So take us through kind of like what the process is. If somebody wanted to contact you, they called you up, they make a, an appointment virtually in person. How does that work? Um, yeah. So, I mean, now since COVID and even prior to COVID, you know, um, it, a lot of stuff is done via phone. Um, Zoom is a little more accepted now, right? So I like the Zoom aspect simply because, you know, a lot of clients that contact me, they want to have conversations at unique hours during the day, right? It's either super early in the morning, after work at night. Um, so if I'm on Zoom, it allows me to kind of cater to that, right? Um, and make sure that I fit them in my schedule. But um, I could do something in person as well. I have an office in uh, Westchester County. We're opening one over in Newburgh in Orange County. Um, so that'll be open in the next few months. We're buying some space there. But um, you could go through Calendly. So, you know, if you go on my website, there's Calendly. If you go through uh, Google, you could book right through Google on my Calendly as well. I'll show you my availability. Um, or you could just reach out to me on social media or, or via email or call. All right. Awesome. And yeah. then like, when it comes to mortgages, I mean, I, I don't know where they're at. I have a 30 year mortgage. I, I think I'm like halfway through that. I think something like that. But if somebody were to be looking for a home nowadays, yeah. right. Um, you know, what, what would they be looking at now? What are the options that they have available to them? Yeah. So, I mean, every, I think the biggest thing that consumers sometimes forget is that each mortgage, just like any loan is unique to the individual, right? So, you know, rates right now have definitely softened and weakened and have come down on some really big highs, right? We were close to 8% a few weeks ago or a few months ago, I should say. Um, in the past few weeks, they've come down into the sixes, which is good. And I think they're going to decrease going into 2025 as well. But, you know, the process of getting a mortgage, what I tell clients typically is the rate is the rate, right? I mean, it is what it is. Like if you go and buy a car right now, if you need a car, Whatever the rate market is, that's what you're going to get, right? It's not like you're going to walk into one dealership and they're going to say 7% and another dealership is going to say 2% unless they have some type of promotional offer. And mortgage lenders really don't do that, right? Typically, they're they're all the same. So rates are kind of what they are. Um, but the biggest thing that separates me with someone else is the knowledge, the experience, and the fact that I live the life in real estate. You know, I say this all the time on my own social media. My wife and I own 10 investment units. Um, I'm about to turn 40 this year. I've been a landlord for over a decade. Um, I live, eat, and breathe real estate. I mean, it's what I do seven days a week, right? So when I talk to a client, I wear multiple hats. Um, I know the legal side of it, even though I have not passed the bar and I don't give legal advice. I do know some of the legal side. I know the, the real estate negotiation side. And then obviously I know the mortgage side, right? So I'm actually a licensed real estate agent for myself as well. I don't necessarily help people buy or sell homes, uh, but I am a licensed agent as well. So, you know, once again, you're getting like the full package when you work with me. And I've been doing this going on 14 years um, in the mortgage industry. So I have fun with it. Listen, we'll, we'll, we'll be friends once we're done with it. For yeah, sure. No, definitely. I mean, you know, when speaking of when people are going to be working with you, um, when they're coming to you, right? Uh, I know there's there are probably like prerequisites of things that they need to have with them. Yeah. What are the most important documents that they need to have to make sure that they have the most efficient conversation with you possible? That's a great question, actually. Um, not many people ask that, right? It, there is definitely homework when you're looking to buy real estate. 
So the biggest thing I tell clients is if you go and get a pre-approval from a lender, if they don't ask you for documentation, they're not bringing you farther. They're not bringing you far enough along the road to success than they should be, right? So when I do a pre-approval, my system actually utilizes AI. And when you fill out an application through my secure website, it will cater the requests and the follow-ups based on your answers. So if you're a teacher, let's say, and you get paid by a biweekly pay stub and a W-2, the system will know that based on your responses and ask you for the information. So typically we look at 30 days of pay stubs, W-2 forms, 1099s, in certain situations, tax returns. If you own real estate already, they'll look for mortgage statements, leases, if you rent them out, um, your homeowner's insurance. So there's a lot of items that could come into play. The good thing is, is the system is smart enough to limit those items based on your answers. And then I go through that obviously as well and put human eyes on it, but it's super smart and it prevents me from saying, hey, I need this, this, and this, or forgetting anything. And then making us play that game of tennis that we all hate, right? Like, oh, I need this. Too. Yeah, oh, I need this. Oh no, oh, I, I need this. that. <laughs> Let me tell you, I've been doing this a long time. I've worked at major banks and I used to have to type those emails up. And when it's nine o'clock at night and you're asking someone for, for a bunch of documents, you sometimes forget, you know, I need 2022 W-2s in 2021. Maybe you leave out 2021, right? And then I got to come back to them again the next day. It's just, it's a pain for both of us. Yeah. So the system definitely takes care of a lot of it, but be prepared and do the homework, provide the information and you'll be a lot better off in the future for sure. All right. And then, you know, when it comes to, you know, let's say they already signed up and they filled everything out. Um, what are some of the possible things that they could look at? Right. So like, I know that I was saying like, you know, I know there's like those 15 year mortgage or 30 year mortgage, but yep. there's different also types of properties. Right. I mean, they're, they're like, Correct. it could either be a rental property. It could yep. be investment property. Um, yeah. I don't know. It if could be a second home. Years. The same yeah. thing. Um, and then, yeah, a second home, the yep. first time home buyer, you know, so those are the types of things. Um, are those kind of like all that's available or are there different scenarios that I'm not thinking about? So I, I think more so, th so those are all the items that go into quoting a rate as far as risk, right? Like what you're trying to accomplish, what your situation is, your scenario, what are your needs and wants? That's, that's part of my discovery during the pre-approval. I think what's more important and what you're kind of alluding to is there are different products and programs for those items, right? So if you're looking to buy an investment property, let's say, there are so many different investors that offer different types of loans for investment properties. Maybe you're looking to buy an investment property, fix it up and flip it immediately, not rent it. We have fix and flip loans. Maybe you're looking to buy a property, fix it, and then rent it long-term. We have a fix and rent loan. Maybe you don't need to fix anything up and you just want to be a landlord and the property's in great shape. We have that. Maybe you're looking to buy a property and just renovate it and live in it. We have renovation loans. Maybe you're trying to build a house and you need a new construction loan. I mean, it, it literally just goes on and on and on. So like during the pre-approval discovery, I find out like, what are you looking to accomplish? Are you buying a house to live in? Are you buying a house for vacation? Are you buying it for an investment? And then from there, that's when we kind of get more granular and say, hey, listen, I have you know, mystery four or five, I have this, this, and this, and we could go with this investor or this investor. This is their rates. These are their closing costs. This is the good, bad, and ugly from them. I mean, I literally go through everything, right? right. And that's my job is advising, right? And and saying what's good and bad. All right. And then now, is this only something that you work with in the, in the New York area? Are you able to also uh, give quotes for outside of the New York area yep. or is it, or is it, you know? Yeah. So my, myself and my team are, so my company itself is nationally licensed. Okay. My team, people on my team are nationally licensed. So if someone wants to buy in Wisconsin, even if I'm not licensed in Wisconsin, I have someone that could help with the loan. One of my colleagues, I don't leave the process. So I still handhold. I'm the point of contact. Um, I do everything for my client. I don't make as much money on those types of states, right? Because I'm not personally licensed there, but I still, I, I care about the relationship. That's mm -hmm. where I really make my money, right? I always tell people I happen to be in the mortgage business, but I really, I, I'm a professional in relationships, right? Because that's how I grow. That's how I stay busy. That's how I earn my income is through relationships. But um, we're nationally licensed. I'm personally licensed in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Florida, and Maine, um, and I'm, I have some additional ones in Texas and California I'm working on. It's just they charge you a lot of money and there's a lot of time that goes into those licenses. 
So that's why I have people on my team that are nationally licensed. And then I just partner up with them and get the deal done. Uh, awesome. So, I mean, it kind of really helps you <laughs> diversify, you know, especially if that's that homeowner is going to move to Florida, you can talk to them about that. You know, I yep. know there's a lot of you New Yorkers in Florida. So, Hey, if you Tons. guys are retiring and going and the Carolinas, there, bro, <laughs> honestly, the Carolinas are basically for Florida, right? Now. I was just going to, I was just going to say, you know, Dude, South Carolina wild. sounds like a really good place too. But. And they're building <laughs> nonstop. And the one thing I'll say is, is when it comes to being like nationally licensed, so I've done loans in probably about two thirds of the country. New York and California are the hardest states and the most expensive states for real estate. So uh, hardest as far as laws, but most expensive when it comes to buying real estate. And without the, you know, New York and California just doing loans in different states um, besides the areas where I'm licensed throughout my career, I've learned that it's super simple right? To do a loan in Wisconsin or the Carolinas. I just had one close in Raleigh, you know, not like, I don't know, two months ago, right? So I, I'm, I'm there. I know the local laws and I could help. And if I don't have an answer, I could find it quickly and make sure it gets done the right way. Nice. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, it's also something that, you know, it gives people a peace of mind that they have that, they don't have that stress. They could get like a one-top shop, a uh, one-stop shop, if you will. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, especially when they're looking to purchase. Um, yep. When it comes to, like, I guess pre, uh, I, I can't really say like pre-approving somebody, but you know, what are some key things? I know that the the real estate market's like up and down and all over the place right now, um, but like, what are some key things that people would want to look at um, that would really set them up for success? when they're looking for a mortgage and then eventually owning a home. Like you don't want them to foreclose as soon as they move in type of thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. That, that yeah. Type let's, thing. let's not use that term again on this, on this call. <laughs> Foreclosure is like, no. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, my big thing is, is that a lot of people come to me and they think I'm transactional based. Right. And I, I I'm bringing up the relationship, you know, position again, for one reason, I try and take an advisory role. Because, you know, my wife being a financial advisor and us having this real estate portfolio and just really being hyper-focused on wealth building, mm -hmm. um, my own personal experience comes into my conversations with clients, right? So like what I tell everyone is do the legwork, do the homework up front. If you're self-employed or if you have something funky going on where you're moving from state to state or you have a lot of large cash deposits or something that may not be quote unquote, normal, nothing really is normal, right? I mean, like the, the, the book of underwriting guidelines is not logical, right? It doesn't make sense. Like it doesn't follow. No one is, no one's like tracking their deposits and like gets paid the same amount every single week. It, it just, we don't live that way, right? Mm -hmm. The world doesn't work that way. We have Venmos, we have Zells, we have cash apps, you know, people work side jobs. I mean, look at Mr. A45. You got mm -hmm. like 40 jobs, right? You I network. Have... Pretty you're, close. you're a computer guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> listen, I got a brand apparel. I do mortgages. You know, I mean, like we have to wear many hats, like I said before. So <clears throat> to me, the biggest thing is having the conversation with a professional as early as possible, being open-minded. Like don't, a lot of clients will call me and say, well, I spoke to my brother who bought a house 30 years ago and he said that I need to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Listen, it's, it's like buying a car. Like, you know, you may have bought a car 10 years ago, but it may be different now, right? Like 10 years ago, they may have loved cash. Now they may love credit, right? So it's one of those things like try and take everything with a grain of salt. Don't Google search everything. Get your ducks in a row when it comes to the amount of money you make, how you make it, how much money you have, and then speak with someone like me. And what I'll do is I put that in perspective. You know, I'll tell you like, this is what your payment is. This is how much money it's going to cost you to buy the real estate. And I do that upfront. Like when I do a pre-approval, I email and in the body of my email, once I send you your letter, it says, this is the estimated cash to close. This is your monthly payment. These are the taxes I use, the estimated taxes, you know, while you're searching for a home, be mindful of that. These are, this is the estimated homeowner's insurance. So I go through this stuff to kind of train the client to like, oh yeah, when I'm looking at a house, it's not like, oh, I love the fact that the bathroom is here. It's like, okay, what do the numbers look like as well? Yeah. Right? Like get yeah. used to that, change that mentality because you may only buy one home in your lifetime and we want it to be successful. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, what, what's the rule of thumb now? I know that they used to say that if your um, debt to income ratio is a certain amount that 
you know, you got to watch that because then you might not be able to afford the incidentals, if you will. Not you, you, you can afford the mortgage, yeah. but then you wouldn't yeah. be able to afford yeah. the incidentals. And that's yeah. kind of like yeah. some of the stuff that they look at, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So debt debt to income ratio after after 2008. Fast forward to like 2013, they they really became more relaxed on debt to income ratio. So like take an FHA loan, a Federal Housing Administration loan. You could actually go up to in certain circumstances, you go up to you could go up to 55 or even 60 percent debt to income ratio. Now, where my service comes into play is I put that into perspective for the client. I'm like, listen, this is on your gross income. This is not your net income. It's your gross. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're making, <clears throat> let's say, ten thousand dollars a month, right? Good income per month. And I could go up to a 60 or let's say 55 percent debt to income ratio. That means your mortgage itself and any other any other items listed on your credit report could be up to fifty five hundred dollars a month now you're not making if you're making 10 grand gross you're not making that net yeah. right you got to deduct your taxes whatever you put in for retirement you know your health benefits stuff like that you may be spending close to like 70 percent just for your credit bills anything on your credit report student loans car loans and the mortgage itself so if you don't have someone advising you and worrying about your pocket and they're just worrying about their own, then what happens is, is that you're setting up a failure, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's where that advisory role comes into play. I've never had a client knock on wood in 14 years, go into foreclosure or call me at any point saying, listen, I'm having trouble paying a mortgage. Never he once. Said, he said the bad word. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's the word of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, listen, but, I have an 18 month old. So the number of the day and the word of the day is a big deal, right? Now. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, that's important for people to understand if they don't have the right person guiding them through their um, through their process and, and like really look at the numbers and say, listen, this is where you're at. And then if you like, how much are you really taking home? Look at that <laughs> and then look at how much this is. You know, you're not going to be inflation proof. Right. So as you can see, yeah. With, sure. with the last what I think I'll probably say last six months, um, the the cost of milk, eggs, bread has gone up. Yeah. And that's just the basic groceries, right? So it's something where, you know, I, I appreciate you saying, you know, that you're somebody that actually does that, where they'll look at this stuff and you don't think of somebody as a number. Yeah. I mean, um, listen, I was a first time home buyer in my mid twenties and no one did that for me. Mm -hmm. And they were just, you know, that what happens in real estate, which is really a bad, bad um, it, it's it's kind of like everyone just automatically does this, which is frustrating. And it's like almost a bad omen for people in the real estate industry is they just, they constantly just say like, bring your checkbook to closing. Yeah, it's just like, they kind of gloss everything over, right? And they make it seem like all like rainbows and unicorns. And the thing is, is that, you know, you're spending a lot of money, right? And whenever I work with a client or I even speak to like a family member or a friend and we talk about real estate, or just anything for that matter, anything that you're looking to buy, like there's an ugly part of that. There's a bad part of it too. It's like, what's the trade-off? You know, so I talk to some clients and I tell them, you're not really ready to buy a home. I just did it. I actually just did it yesterday. Someone was looking to buy a property over a million. And I was like, you really should buy a property like $400,000 less. Like I could get you approved, but it's just not, you're not going to live comfortably and you're not going to have the same lifestyle you have right now. Mm -hmm. And of course, no one wants to hear no. We're not mm. we're not wired to hear no, but sometimes we need to, right? We need to, and I have no problem being that guy to do that. Especially um, when because, you have somebody in the background going, "But I want this one, <laughs> dude." I mean, I mean, you know how it is. We live in this like society where it's like the iPhone comes out, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same iPhone as last year, and people are like, "I have to spend a thousand dollars and get the new thing," yeah. and and that happens in real estate. And I think I just need to take that out of the equation say, listen, when it's right, it's right. And I tell people all the time, if it's meant to be, it'll be right. Yeah. Um, but you have to be comfortable and you have to make sure that your finances are in check. So you don't go down that rabbit hole and all of a sudden are losing sleep because of your mortgage payment. It's just not a good feeling. And, and, you know, to kind of add to living comfortably and let's say they do eventually get promoted and they have extra income. What are some tips that some mortgage owners could, or I should say like borrowers could, uh, uh, see if they do certain things, right? So like I've heard that if you put an extra uh, principal payment on your mortgage, it helps you pay it down quicker, it, yep. you know, spend less on interest. You know, what are some key tips that you could kind of give people listening in um, that would kind of help them if they 
went with you and they went with the mortgage, they, you know, they got to take care of it for the next 30 years, you know? I think the real question is how many mortgage people have you asked this question? Because you know your stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> Mr. 845, come on, bro. Like, I'm, you I'm, know, you, you're you leading me to <laughs> success right now and I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, no um, yeah so, so there's a few options, right? So what you're, what you're, um, what you're referring to is traditional prepayment. And I always tell people, if you set up an auto payment, um, specifically an auto payment that is a bi-weekly auto payment. So if you're paid bi-weekly, where you get paid 26 pay periods per year, mm -hmm. you could set up an auto payment towards your mortgage for 26 pay periods. And what will happen is one full mortgage payment will go towards the principal of your loan. And if you're in a 30-year loan, that saves you on average about four to six years of time and interest, right? So it's a huge impact, right? And it just mimics when you get paid, which is nice, right? So if you're paid bi-weekly, a half payment will come out twice per year. You don't really feel it. And it's automatically going towards the principal and you save time and money. The other option is doing something called a mortgage recast, okay? Not many people know this. Do you know what it is, Mr. 845? You hear that? I do not. I do not. Okay. <laughs> He's not just saying that because we didn't plan any of this. No, no, I swear. Um, so a mortgage recast is something that very few lenders offer. But what it is, is uh, my company does offer it. The Each investor is different on how they offer it. So the terms may be a little different. But a mortgage recast is basically when you take a large lump sum payment. And instead of doing your biweekly payments, let's say you were to save 25000 right? And you're like, I want to pay my mortgage down by 25 grand. You call me up after we close. I put you in touch with the servicing department. And they'll basically, what they'll do is, is they'll lower your monthly mortgage balance, or I'm sorry, they'll lower your mortgage balance, your principal loan balance, and then they'll lower your monthly mortgage payment as well to match and mimic that new lower balance, right? Oh, nice. So if you owe, let's say 400,000, and you want to bring that balance down to 375, the benefit of doing this is it will lower your monthly payment, right? When you do it. So you don't save time when doing a recast, but you improve your monthly cash flow. So right now for a lot of my clients, what's happening is they're getting higher rates, right? Because the mortgage market's higher. Some of them are saving money and they're like, how can I knock this down? What I'm telling them is if you're looking to refinance in a year or two, which we most likely will happen once inflation dissipates and goes down, mm -hmm. I'm telling them, save your extra money. Don't pay extra now right? Save your money and do a large lump sum payment when we refinance, do a lower loan amount. And then at that point, you're getting the benefit of both. Yeah, now you have a lower principal balance, you have a lower payment, you have a lower rate, and it's just like the trifecta, right? Nice. So that's another way to kind of amplify paying off your loan in a shorter period of time or saving money per month, depending on what is better for you and your family. Wow, that's awesome! Yeah, I don't. I had no idea, and I I like it. I like it a lot. We make <laughs> listen. I make no money on stuff like that. A lot of the stuff and resources that I give clients and education and like the empowerment that I share with them, it doesn't make me money, you know. And and it burns me a lot more than than it should. But the thing is, is that um, it it satisfies me as a human, right? And like being on the right side of the coin and making yeah. sure that people leave a conversation with me saying. This guy cares about me. He doesn't care about his pocket, like I said earlier. Um, and that's that's what makes me happy. Like yeah. obviously I have to put food on the on the table for family, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, helping people and and helping their families as well and being successful financially is really what I why I love what I do. Yeah. I mean, it just sets them up for success because then now they had a good experience with you. Then I'm sure that if they're buying a home, usually uh, it's going to be like another family member is going to be moving out eventually, you know, yep. Hey, you're 18, yep. get out, you know, yeah. <laughs> go to yeah. college and then, yeah. and then you got to get that job and buy a home. Um, and that's kind of like the American dream, if you will. And yep. you're really kind of giving people and setting them up for success. So it's definitely yep. something that's awesome to to talk with you and get a lot of that information. And I'm, and I'm sure that you have a lot more information to give people. So I heard that, you know, from a little grapevine that you have some sort of channel that you help yeah. and give yeah. advice yeah. with people. Yeah. So, so I have my YouTube, right. Which um, has you uh, reels and has videos. Um, that's real, real mortgage maverick, right. That's the handle. But I also have uh, my podcast finance with Fernando I've been running that podcast since 2018. Um, and that's basically like a, a resource library of me just kind of doing mind dumps, right? I do some interviews with professionals. Recently, I had a retired tax assessor on one of my um, 
you know, on one of my podcast episodes, I had someone who talked about um, aging in place, which means if you're elderly, how to kind of still afford your house. So we did an interview with someone like that. Um, but even like the other day, I, I filmed an episode um, and it was just about, um, you know, navigating this type of this this type of territory when it comes to real estate in the market. Right. And like what to expect, how to prepare yourself. And I'll do that every once in a while because it does change. You know, it changes, you know, inside of the year and even year to year. So, you know, there's a bunch of tips and tricks and like what to expect and, you know, how to how to do recasting and all of that stuff. It's just a mind dump for me. And it's it's a great resource, you know. So I put that whenever I pre-approve someone, I introduce them to my social media, I introduce them to the podcast. And um, and and people have really loved it, and there's been some positive feedback from it. So hmm. call it the Chronicles of the Real uh, Mortgage Maverick. Yeah, there you go, Chronicles <laughs> of Real Mortgage Maverick. You can see me how I've consistently from 2018 to now gained weight, which is great. Um, <laughs> hey, you know how I <laughs> how I have crow's feet now, whereas I didn't back five years ago, you know, or six years ago. But it's it's been a fun run and. You know, the, the audience loves it. Surprisingly enough, and this is what I actually take pride in, a lot of people in my industry listen to it. It's more so people in my industry than the consumer. And when I talk to my social media guy or, you know, you know, people like yourself, that to me is more of a testament that I know what I'm talking about because people in the industry are looking to me as a resource. Mm -hmm. A lot of them use me for business, right? I do their personal loans. I negotiate deals for them, right? As their mortgage person. I mean, right now I have a real estate agent that's using me to to purchase her second investment property and I helped her with her first. So, you know, it's um it's something I take pride in, right? And and when other professionals are looking to you as a professional, that's like to me the biggest testament, I think, in what you do. All right. Awesome. And and again, where was that that podcast found? The podcast is on Spotify, Apple, um, it's on uh, Android, it's uh Finance with Fernando. If you just Google Finance with Fernando, okay. you'll get it. If you listen through Apple or Android, you're just going to get the audio. But if you log into Spotify, you'll have video as well. So I shoot it awesome. as a video podcast. Yeah. But awesome. uh, but it's audio on it's nine streaming platforms. So you could find it really on any podcast platform. Soon enough, I'll be on Joe Rogan, and then I will be Joe Rogan. Uh, it may <laughs> just take me another forty years, but yeah. we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. It's all good. Hey, listen, you got to keep trucking along with it. And, you know, I it's, it's the humble hustle, bro. It's a yeah, humble hustle. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, and I really appreciate you, Fernando, ha like having you on the show today uh, and just like really letting the viewers that in the Hudson Valley know, you know, how how not only are you a part of the Hudson Valley, but how you help the Hudson Valley. Um, so it, it is something that, you know, this is what this series is about, trying to interview as many business owners as, as possible to kind of just tell people, hey, you never know. You can find your next favorite, right? Yeah, um, so sure. I definitely appreciate you giving me your time and, and uh, being able to interview you. Um, check them out. I will, I'll have his page tagged and his YouTube tagged to the post um, when this goes up. Uh, again, every Wednesday at noon, all these videos will be posting up. Uh, we'll also put some reels and stuff like that on, on Instagram and some videos on TikTok to kind of help promote this so that people could really uh, uh support a lot of the efforts that we're doing here first and foremost just make sure that you uh like and follow these pages that of the different business owners that we interview they're taking the time out of the day not only to give their expertise but also to like you know talk about themselves and and maybe help you in the future um so that being said everybody this is uh mr a45 here uh, i'll be hitting the streets and we're going to be finding your next favorite all right guys take it easy <laughs>